The airlines are focused and Delta United pulling back on at least 12% of their schedule over the weekend. Joining us to discuss, I'm pleased to say, it's Bloomberg's Kriti Gupta with our chart of the day. Morning, Kriti. Well, good morning, John. Well, that's actually what we're tackling here because it wasn't too long ago where airlines were the classic, not only volatility trade, but the classic recovery trade. If you were betting on the economy roaring back from the halting of 2020, it was very clear that airlines were how you were going to do it as cruise lines as well. But airlines in particular, given there was that disposable income that a lot of people want to go see their families in various parts of the country that recovery trade John well it's faltered a little bit and you can really see that in my chart of the day today which highlights the major US airlines and this kind of uptrend that you see uh, really going until about May or June of this year and then faltering and a lot of this doesn't actually have to do with passenger counts which if you look at the TSA passenger check kind of count it continues to climb gets higher and higher more people considering business travel more people considering uh, travel and leisure broadly Broadly, but you're not actually seeing that show up in yeah, the stock sure. itself. And it has a lot of it to do with simply the shortages that you're seeing with flight crews and the variant. And on top of that, John, the massive amounts of debt that some of these airlines have accumulated uh, as, as recently as, as last year. Is that a trend that holds true for other quote unquote reopening trades, Creedy? Because I noticed that chart kind of seems like it topped out in March. And that's actually what we saw with a lot of that rotation that we saw starting the year in 2021. And then it rolled over. Yeah, to your point, exactly. I mean, you're seeing this in cruise lines. I think travel was the best gauge to really look at that and, and really talk about kind of that recovery trade faltering to growth in particular. Remember, one of the major kind of quotes I love to rely on is RBC's Lori Calvacina. She said that the value to growth trade switches when growth decelerates. And that's something that you've actually seen quarter over quarter this year. You've seen that growth trade actually drop when it comes to the underlying economy. And instead, what people are doing are switching to those yielding sectors, real estate, uh, consumer staples, uh, utilities, for example, as well as some of those big tech names, which were kind of losing their luster at the start of the year, and some of that money flowing out of those classic recovery trades, it really begs the question, how much of the kind of that value trade that's so traditional in post-recessionary periods, how much of that is in the rear view mirror? We were talking with Luke Hickmore from Aberdeen Investments this morning, who wants to get into airline stocks, to cruise stocks, to anything that's getting crushed right now by this Omicron wave. I wonder if the uh, if there were a regulation in the U.S. that you had to show proof of vaccination or recovery, mm. would that help or hurt passenger counts? Does that mean fewer people would fly because they don't want to have to show proof of vaccination, or would more people fly because they're confident? Uh, about flying with a tube full of vaccinated people. Yeah, well, I mean, the immediate thought is that it would hurt, right? Because there's so many other ways to travel. We were just talking about in the break about train travel, which has really been picking up uh, in the last in year America? or two. In America? In America, the shocker, right? <laughs> we do actually have an Amtrak station, a very nicely renovated new Penn station that's been getting quite a bit of traffic. In addition to the fact that more and more people are buying cars, at the end of the day, the U.S. is the largest gasoline-consuming nation of the world, and more and more people are looking to kind of do their domestic travel via road trips, via train trips, and that could actually affect the bottom line for a lot of these airlines. And remember, this is the worst time for them because they're also, like I said, really combating not only worker shortages and flight mandates and unions for pilots and, and flight attendants, but also dealing with, like I said, those giant debt loads that for a large time were kind of keeping them afloat and just, you know, a hair away from bankruptcy as recently as last fall.